Hello everybody and welcome to this microeconomic video on how public goods cause market failure and this video follows up the last one on public goods. Now firstly I'd like to draw your attention to the bottom point here. These problems lead to the under provision of public goods and therefore market failure. So we're going to learn about our two problems in just a second. But the key point you need to get there is that when public goods are under provided, there is an under provision of public goods, market failure occurs. And this is because market failure occurs when there is a net welfare loss, when overall society loses out. And society loses out when these public goods aren't provided for them. So therefore market failure occurs. So this is the key point here. Whenever public goods are under provided, society is overall at a loss, there is a net welfare loss, so thus market failure occurs. Okay, so firstly, the free rider problem in the top left. Uh, once a public good has been provided, it can be used by all, by all, as we said with lampposts. Once one person uses it, it can be used by anybody else at the same time as well. So therefore, individuals who haven't contributed towards it, individuals who haven't paid for it, they can still use it. So for example, if a company was going to say, put up new lampposts all on my street, and I decided that I wasn't going to uh, give them a donation, I wasn't going to pay towards the lampposts, Every night I could still walk out on my street and use those lampposts because they're public goods. No matter how many people consume them, I can still consume them as well because they're still giving out light and I can still use that light. So that's the free rider problem. Once a public good has been provided, even those who haven't paid for it can still consume it. And next we have the valuation problem. Now, it is difficult to value the cost of public goods because it is difficult to value the benefits they give to society. So it's difficult to put a price on a lamppost because I don't know how many people will use that lamppost. In one area, the lamppost might be worth a lot because loads and loads of people use the light from it. But in another, another area, only say two or three people might use it at night. So therefore it isn't worth as much. So therefore it's difficult to value how much public goods cost because it's difficult to value their benefit to society. So therefore, because they're difficult to value, if a private business or a private company was looking at providing a public good, like lampposts, say, then they don't know if they'll be overpaying or overvaluing these public goods or underpaying for them or undervaluing. Or they don't know if they're paying just right in the middle either. So therefore, because they don't know exactly how much to value these public goods at and they don't know exactly how much to pay for them, then they won't provide them. And both of these problems, the free rider problem and the valuation problem, lead to the under provision of public goods. Because if people, if people know that the free rider problem will occur, if people know that some people won't pay but still consume the good, then they will not, uh, then the public good will not be provided. So therefore, there has been an under provision of public goods and thus market failure. And with the valuation problem, because businesses and companies willing to provide a public good don't know if they will, they are overpaying for it or underpaying for it, they won't provide it at all, they won't pay for it at all. So therefore, there has been an under provision of public goods, so therefore market failure. 